Okay, output parameters. That's one of the code smells that you should avoid at all times. Let's take a look at why. So in this example, I have a method called getCustomers, which takes a page index and returns the list of customers in that page. But it also has a second parameter, which is an output parameter, and that returns the total number of customers in the database. So the problem here is, in order for me to call this method, I have to declare and initialize a variable like count and then pass it along with the out modifier to this method. That looks ugly. Plus, naturally, we think of data going inside a function and coming out. It doesn't quite make sense to pass the data in and come out from the arguments. Now, this problem can get worse if you have two or more output parameters. Take a look at this example. In order for me to call this method, I have to initialize two variables, and that's unnecessary. Now let's take a look at how we can refactor this with ReSharper. So in this file called output parameters that you can find in the solution under output parameters folder, I've got this get customers method that you saw earlier. And here is a method called display customers, where we simply call this method then display the total number of customers in the database. And finally, iterate over them and display each. Now to keep things simple, I didn't implement fetching customers from database because that's irrelevant here. Let's see how we can refactor this method in a safe way. So to start with, I want to put my cursor on this total count parameter here. There you go. I want to get rid of it. So again, I asked ReSharper to help me. Control Shift R to bring up refactoring commands. And look, the last one here is transform out parameters. ReSharper already knows that output parameters are code smells. So let's go ahead with that. And in this dialog box, ReSharper is suggesting to transform this method into something like this. So by getting rid of total count, getCustomers method would only need a page index parameter, and the output parameter is gone. Instead, it returns a tuple. A tuple is like a data structure that has multiple fields. In this case, our tuple has a list of customers and an integer that represents the total count of customers. So let's go ahead with this refactoring. Okay, let's see what happened. So here's our method. As you see, it's modified. So we don't have that ugly output parameter anymore, and we get a tuple. Now in display customers method where we use that, ReSharper automatically modified the code in a safe way. And uh, what we have here now is the result that is returned from that method is stored in a variable called tuple. And now tuple has a couple of properties, item one and item two. Item two is assigned to total count and item one is assigned to customers. And the rest of the code is unchanged. Now, even though we fixed that problem, but this tuple itself is another code smell. In fact, there is another lecture for that in this course. And the reason for that is this item one and item two is not really revealing the intention. So how can we get rid of this tuple in a safe way? Well, we have to create a class like get customers result that has two meaningful properties instead of item one and item two. So let's see how we can do that. Public class get customers result. Give it a couple of properties like i enumerable of customer and call it customers and another one total count. Now we want to safely replace this tuple with that new class we just created. So we put the cursor here on the method name. We can press Control Shift R to activate refactoring commands, or we can just press Control and F6 to change the signature. So what we want to do is to change the return type from tuple to get customers result. Let's go ahead. Something broke. Item 2 and item 1 are not recognized. And here we have another error. So we did something wrong. What went wrong? Well, this new class that we created does not have properties like item 1 and item 2. So let's undo this refactoring temporarily. 
Okay, so we're back here. We still return a tuple from this method. What I'm going to do is, because I want to do a step-by-step -step refactoring, I'm going to change this customer to item 1, because in this code, item 1 is assigned to customers. So I want to make this class look like the tuple. And I want to do the same thing with total count. So I'm going to rename it with F2 to item 2. Now it looks exactly like the tuple. Now it's the time to go and change the signature of get customers. So let's go here. There you go. So control and F6. Now we change the return type to get customers result. Okay, it's much better now. We only have one error. And we can easily fix that. The important thing is that the client of this method here is not broken. Imagine what would happen if we had 10 references to this method and all of them would break. It would take a lot of time to fix that. So now we have minimized the changes, the breaking changes to only one instance here. So what I'm going to do is instead of returning a tuple, I'm going to return a new get customers result. And I have to set item one to that list of customers that we were supposedly retrieving from the database and item two to the total count of customers. Okay, so at this moment, I have no breaking changes. So good stuff. Now let's see how we can clean up our client code here. It still looks ugly. It's still referring to item one and item two. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a safe rename refactoring that we learned earlier. So F2, I'm going to rename that to customers and do the same with item two. This one should be called total count. Good. Okay, it's a little bit better now. Now let's take a look here again. So look, we're doing something a little bit unnecessary. We are getting these customers and assigning it to a temporary variable and then iterating over that here. We could simply just use this tuple.customers. By the way, we got to get rid of this tuple. So let's do that first. Put the cursor here. Rename refactoring. I'm going to change that to result. Okay. Now this customers variable is unnecessary. We want to get rid of it. Again, using resharper, control shift R. We have this option here called inline variable. Let's see what happens when we select that. So that declaration is gone. And in the for each, we simply iterate over result.customers. So we can do the same thing with total count. Let's try it. So put the cursor here. Control Shift R. Inline variable. There you go. All that unnecessary declarations are gone. And now here in console.write line, we simply output the total count of customers that is stored in the result. So this code is much better than when we started. So with step-by-step -step refactoring, we got rid of that ugly output parameter and made our code much cleaner and much more readable. There is just one thing here that is bugging me a little bit, and that is this one here. Because when someone looks at this method call, they have no idea what is one. There are two ways to address that. One way to fix it is to declare a constant or a variable called page index and set it to one. So how we do that with resharper, we select this argument and then again, control shift R and we select introduce variable. Now, because in this case, it's a constant, I would rather to use a constant integer. And see, Resharper automatically chose the name page index for it. I didn't have to choose it. Now, even though the number of lines of code in this method increased by one, I think this method is a bit more intention revealing. But if you don't like this approach, there is another way. Let's undo this. What we can do is to use name parameters in C Sharp. So I just type page index colon one. It's purely personal choice or you may leave one as is. It's up to you. So the takeaway from this lecture is to avoid output parameters at all times and instead return objects, 
meaningful objects that reveal intention from your methods. In the next lecture, we'll take a look at another code smell called variable declarations on the top.